This tutorial is to inspire you to find your hidden artist by using lots of experimental techniques in watercolour. Let's get started. I'm using a large soft haired brush and I'm wetting the paper, sort of the top part here to represent the sky, but also the bottom part, some land, etc. And I'm going to base this loosely on a landscape. I'm using a plastic store card cut up and I'm just starting off with a little bit of Prussian blue and I'm sort of placing this on the damp paper and this is a freshly squeezed paint and I'm adding a little bit of quinacridone gold to that colour there to make a lovely green and if you notice just above there that paper is dry there so I like to have a bit of control having a dried area of paper. I'm just applying a little bit more of that blue. So basically I'm starting off in a quite a random way but loosely basing it on landscapes and I quite like this way of working in watercolour painting where you can just loosely start off and see what happens especially working on a wet surface you can see all the paint is running up there and I find it so inspiring it's very unpredictable and this is a very experimental style but I feel that beginners and improvers can really play around with this and find their inner artist just by sort of experimenting in this way. You just need a handful of colours. I'm just applying Payne's Grey and Quinacridone Gold here onto the damp surface, just using a plastic card. And you can cut the card up in sort of different sizes as well to dip it in to your paints. I find tube paints the best, but if you have pans and don't have tubes, just give your um, pans a spray beforehand, about half an hour beforehand to moisten them up. But it's always better with tubes. But what happens is they kind of, they go very random, especially when you use the plastic card and really magical things can happen. And my advice is when you see something magical, just allow it to sort of flow. And that's what I'm doing here, just tilting and allowing the paints to flow, sort of guiding them, but just letting, letting things happen by itself. And it does so with watercolour paints, especially water and paint. What can be more magical than that? And I find teaching this to my face to face students over a number of years, whether they're beginners or they've been painting for years, everyone's on an even sort of keel here and they just all enjoy it so much. And I just always say to them, just let it happen. Don't sort of guide it, but don't sort of interfere too much with the process. So I'm just painting a sky here using a large mop synthetic brush. And it's a little bit of the phthalo blue and a touch of cerulean. And I'm tilting to allow the paint to run down to look atmospheric. And as you can see there, I've left the white of the paper still in that dry area. It's always good to have some light. So I'm just mopping up puddles as well with a clean, damp brush. And what's great about working in a sketchbook, it allows you to loosen up and experiment. So I'm just adding a little bit of that phthalo blue at the bottom to represent maybe some water. And now I'm sprinkling on some table salt onto the damp paint. And what that does, it absorbs the paint to create some wonderful light textures. I'm also sprinkling it on to the trees area here. It may not work, but I always kind of like to have a little go and see what happens. I've got a puddle here, so I'm just using a clean damp brush just to soak up the paint to stop it from running into the sky area. Sometimes that can cause a cauliflower or a bloom when wet paint runs into damp paint or paint that's nearly dry. So again, just collecting puddles at the top here with a clean, damp brush. And I'm just getting a dilute phthalo blue painting wet on dry with my size 10 round brush just to create some reflections in this water area. And I'm adding a little bit more blue there, but still keeping the light in this area. So just a touch more of that beautiful phthalo blue. I'm just dampening the bottom of the trees and bringing wet water into that water area just to soften that bank of trees. And what I'm doing now is I'm actually using a plastic card to scratch the surface of the paper 
And what that does is paint runs into the scratch to create some really thin, dark lines. This is permanent, so I would recommend practicing this technique because you can't reverse it. If you're not sure about it, you could wait for your painting to dry to paint thin, dark lines with a brush. But I'm sort of turning sideways here and just sort of, just sort of scratching in with the car to create tree trunks and branches. I find using alternative tools a really great way of sort of getting in touch with our inner artists because sometimes when you use traditional tools like pencils and paintbrushes, we tend to tighten up. But I find from my, my own experience, but also teaching students, that once you give them sort of other things to play with and experiment with, it seems to really help them get in touch with their inner artists. They feel more confident. They're having fun and they're playing playing, experimenting. I also like painting upside down. I like to look at the painting from a different viewpoint. At the end of the day, painting's all about shape and colour, line, direction, textures, you name it. So I'm just scratching into this wet sort of area to create more detail, more tree trunk, trunks and branches. So I'm just sort of lifting off some of the paint here. Another great thing you can do with a plastic card to create the look of grasses, etc. Just more textures and details, especially in the foreground, because it kind of creates depth in your painting. So here's a close up here. You can see the salt has created some wonderful textures, especially in the foreground. I also like those sort of gray rocks just above as well. And that was with the Payne's gray running into the quinacridone gold and phthalo blue. So I really hope you enjoy this tutorial and you found it inspiring and have a go and see if you can make a connection with your inner artist. Thank you so much for watching. If you would like to support the content that I create here on YouTube, why not think about joining my Patreon membership? Details about the membership can be found in the description below, but you will get access to my weekly exclusive tutorials and downloadable outline sketches, and you can cancel any time. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. Happy painting. Bye for now.